So this, this talk in slant is going to be a little bit different. Um, this uh, talk is more laminoplasty versus multi-level anterior cervical fusion. So I think uh, Hyung's talk kind of focused on looking at more a hybrid approach, disc replacement with a fusion versus an actual four-level, three-level fusion. When I think of multi-level disease, I think three, four-level disease. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with doing hybrid operations. My struggle is always getting any kind of authorization for hybrid disease. hyung has got cash paying patients. I live in Medicare. The average age is like 105 here. So uh, it's, it's so difficult to get this kind of stuff approved. So my talk is going to be more about um, the literature comparing multi-level anterior cervical fusions, not necessarily hybrids, um, to posterior laminoplasty. So, oh, I see. All right, good. 57-year-old gentleman, this is a guy I took care of a few years ago, weakness in the arms and legs, balance problems, fine motor skill problems. Um, so from my standpoint, this is three, four level disease. Um, and we're really talking about patients that have a positive K-line, positive posterior spinal line, people that aren't uh, massively kyphotic or with a huge uh, plumb line, minimal instability, minimal degeneration. To me, this is the ideal patient for a posterior laminoplasty. And I would uh, uh, debate the multi-level ACDF versus laminoplasty in this situation. Uh, when I was training, and if laminoplasty is not an operation that you do, and it was not one I did when I came out of training. When I came out of training, everyone got the uh, Rothman Institute special C3 to C6 laminectomy, C3 to C7 fusion. I didn't see a, a single laminoplasty, actually. Um, picked up laminoplasty one or two years into my training, um, and I think there are still very few people doing it recent survey looking at trends over the last 10 years, there's been a 300% increase in ACDF and anterior procedures with a flat lining of laminoplasty. And there are many different reasons for that. But to me, this de debate is between multi-level anterior cervical fusion versus laminoplasty. Again, not necessarily hybrid, which uh, I'm not sure how we get approval for. So posterior approaches, good for multi-level disease, OPLL, congenital stenosis. You guys know the contraindications. To me, there are two advantages of the posterior laminoplasty, and it simply comes to outcomes and complications. Um, so first, uh, there are not that many studies. There are certainly no studies looking at hybrid procedures versus laminoplasty. There are a few looking at ACDF versus laminoplasty. Here's 52 patients. The outcome of multi-level ACDF versus laminoplasty, JOA rate recovery is very similar. The ACDF had more complications um, and there was certainly better range of motion uh, with the laminoplasty, which you would expect because it's a motion preserving procedure. Here's a good meta-analysis, um, 1,351 citations. They looked at six criteria. Again, really no difference in outcome, uh, but in terms of complications, even when you look at C5 palsy rates, more complications with an ACADF than laminoplasty. For those of you that do laminoplasty, very elegant procedure, very little blood loss in my experience. Patients do not have a lot of posterior neck pain and exchange for this dysphagia rate for multi-level anterior cervical surgery uh, is certainly worth it. Um, here's a more recent meta-analysis. Again, no difference in outcomes. Um, ACDF, a little bit lower blood loss, which I probably agree with. Um, laminoplasty, better range of motion. So for me, this is a range of motion operation. I agree that with a hybrid procedure, two-level cervical disc replacement, two-level fusion, um, you will probably maintain some range of motion, but it's probably not as good as not fusing any of the levels with a laminoplasty. So my, my, um, my hypothesis is that there really is no preservation of range of motion with fusion or with hybrid or not as good with hybrid. So here's Hyung, very famous. I don't have any spinal news bios on me. By the way, I like this caricature. I like the American flag. I don't know why there's a rabbit in the background next to golf, but um, a greater acceptance of motion preservation technology will push the envelope for innovators. But it turns out the best motion preserving technology is the laminoplasty. It avoids any fusions in the front. And this is not pushing the envelope. Japanese have been doing this forever. So let's look at range of motion. A lot of people say, well, you don't really get preserved range of motion with a laminoplasty. 502 patients, three-year follow-up, 88% of range of motion preserved compared to pre-op, which is outstanding. This is one of my first few lamino first laminoplasties. And hey guys, thanks for watching. To continue, please log in or create an account for free. Thank you for your support.